Hey everyone, this video is about the Sharp EL512S, a programmable scientific calculator which came on the market in 1988. And the 512S was the replacement for the 512 uh, from four years earlier, and like its predecessor, it supported the algebraic expression reserve or AER programming model. And AER dated all the way back to 1979 for the introduction of the Sharp EL5100, the first calculator to include a dot matrix LCD display capable of displaying alphanumeric characters. And the 512S supports the third version of AER, a simplified version that doesn't handle subroutines, arrays, and lower class variable names. Uh, but I quite like the simplicity and design of this calculator. And like Casio calculators of the same vintage, it was quite advanced for its time. And physically, the 512S is very light and thin, like many similar Sharp and Casio calculators from the mid-80s. It only uh, weighs 69 grams, including battery. It has a two-line display that can display 12 characters on its top line and 10 on its bottom. It has an interesting two-tone keyboard uh, with three key sizes uh, and it supports a single yellow shift key and a blue alpha key. But the 512 doesn't support entry of all letters from the alphabet. Uh, instead it supports A through I, M and X through Z. And although the keyboard is fairly busy, the symbols are larger and easier to read than some similar models. And on its back is a panel that can be unscrewed to provide access to a single coin cell battery, and it comes in a folding wallet style case. And so the 512S has two major modes, comp mode and AER mode. And comp mode is where basic calculations are done. So if I enter an expression, uh, this will get displayed on the top line, uh, and when I hit equals, it will get evaluated. Uh, and we can edit an expression with the playback buttons. So if I hit the left arrow, uh, I can edit it, uh, this expression and hit enter again to re-evaluate it. And, but only the previously uh, entered equation is accessible uh, via playback. And we can switch between numeric formats uh, using the FEC key. So I can switch, for example, uh, to engineering mode. Uh, and we can uh, set our uh, number of decimal places uh, using the tab key. So say I can sit, hit tab 5. And uh, you can also call functions that take uh, single um, arguments uh, prefix style. So say uh, cos45 uh, equals... Uh, and also call functions that take to arguments um, in fixed style. So say, if I want to determine the number of combinations of two objects uh, from, say, a set of 10, I'd enter uh, 10, and then the combinations key, and then 2, and then equals. And uh, the 512S uh, can also uh, perform base conversions. Uh, so for example, I can enter a hex mode, uh, enter a number uh, and then uh, use uh, decimal uh, to convert that to decimal. And there's also polar uh, to rectangular conversions as well. As I mentioned in the introduction, the 512S supports a simplified AER programming model and to use this we can switch to AER mode. Uh, and we're in space one and we can see a very simple example of an AER program. Uh, so the if function syntax uh, with variables in included in brackets is a little bit esoteric. Uh, it causes the program to prompt for the values of those variables and then print out the result of evaluating uh, the right side of the equation. And so if we run this program, we'll be prompted for uh, radius x and uh, the program will print uh, the area of the circle. And programs can prompt uh, for variable values or they can use uh, values stored already in uh, the, that variable. So if we switch to uh, space 2, uh, we can see a, a different uh, program uh, that uses conditional logic. And so uh, this one prompts for two values, uh, A and B. Uh, 
uh, and prints out the maximum of the two. Uh, and so conditional statements on the 512S uh, begin uh, with a Boolean clause. Uh, and in this case, um, A is greater than or equal to B. Uh, and then following the Boolean is a, a yes expression uh, that gets evaluated when that Boolean is true. Uh, and there's also a no expression uh, for when it is false. Uh, so if uh, A is greater than B, uh, then A would be returned and uh, otherwise B would be returned. Uh, so again, we can run that program again now and uh, I'll enter two values say so 3 and 5, uh, and the program returns 5. And in space 3, we've got an example of a more complicated uh, program that uses a loop. And this one prompts uh, again for a number x uh, and creates a loop uh, using a loop index uh, i. Uh, and it uses that uh, loop to sum the squares of the numbers from 1 to x and store that uh, in a variable x. Uh, so loops in AR started uh, using uh, the right arrow uh, symbol. And then uh, following that is a, a loop clause. Uh, so in this case, x is greater than uh, or equal to y, uh, i. And uh, loops have a, a yes clause get, that gets run uh, when the loop condition is true. Uh, so in this case, uh, we add uh, the square of i uh, to z, uh, and then increment i. Uh, and this left and arrow indicates uh, we want to return back to the loop condition. Uh, the loop also can have a no clause, so in this case, uh, when the loop terminates, I uh, will just print out uh, the value of z. Uh, so I can run this now and let's enter, say, 5, and uh, the result is 55. And so the 512S is an example of an elegant programmable scientific calculator from the late 80s uh, that used a simplified version of the AER programming model. And I think for a lot of high school uh, science students, this would have been a really useful device. And I'm really partial to the aesthetics of this calculator, as well as other sharp calculators of the time. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.